Greetings Roasters, and thanks for joining me today for the screencast. In the last edition of this Roasting with Roastmaster series, we looked at how to set up Roastmaster's automatic data logging option, and then how to implement that in Roast via either manual curves or curve templates in a profile. And we watched the roast unfold and looked at some of the advantages that this could bring to a workflow and briefly saw roast and curve events in action. In today's screencast, we're going to explore events in more depth and show you what they are and how to use them and how to implement them in your own workflow. So let's navigate to a completed roast here. Uh, we'll select our last roast of the Kenya Peaberry and then launch the roast analyzer. Now, events are nothing more than a marker at a point in your timeline. You can create them either on a specific curve or on the general roast timeline itself. So let's see how to do this. We want to affix an event on our bean mass curve here. So we'll tap it to select it, then just tap the add event button in the toolbar. Now the marker type here is fine, that's what we want. We'll just give it a title and we'll say yellowing and give it a time of say uh, five minutes and tap save. And we can see that our event is, of course, affixed to this curve. And if we pan and zoom around, that it naturally stays affixed to that curve. And we can tap the event icon and see the details of it, and even tap the edit button if we need to go back and change something later. Now we can also do the same thing on the roast timeline itself. So to do that, we'll tap off of this curve to deselect it and we can tell that no curve is selected because the upper left icon here is just the roast icon and then tap on the add event button again and give this guy a title we'll say pulled trier and we'll say we did that at 10 minutes now tap save and we can see that we now have an event, but this time it's affixed to the actual timeline of the roast. So as we pan and zoom around, it naturally stays affixed to the roast timeline itself. And the same rules apply. We can tap it and see the details of it or tap the edit button and go back and change something later. Now, the only thing I'll add here is that we are doing this on a completed roast. So Roastmaster has no context of time anymore. If we were doing this in a live roast, whenever we invoked that add event button, uh, we would have a timestamp already entered of the current time in the roast. So this process is automatic and all you have to do is enter the marker's name. So you can use this feature as you roast to manually input points of interest on either your timeline or on a specific curve. And these can be anything from sensory information, you know, things you smell. Um, they can be times that you take out the trier to give the beans a sniff, or they can be even substitutes for control values like um, points at which you change the gas flow or a damper setting. And that is exactly what we're going to do as we evolve our use of profiles here in today's screencast to show you an alternative to using control curves wherein you predefine events in a curve template of a profile and then set those events to auto trigger at a specific temperature. So in this type of uh, profile workflow, you're very hands off. You don't have to worry about entering control curve values. You just simply rely on the auto trigger events to tell you when to perform certain actions. So let's see how to do this. We'll navigate to our roasters library, then tap on the roaster where our profiles live and tap the profiles row and select our pyrolysis target three profile. 
Now we want these events to be tied to our bean mass curve. That is the main curve that we interact with in this roast and we want them to be auto triggered based on the temperatures of that curve. So we'll tap on our bean mass curve template and scroll down here to the events. Now this is the profile that we've already been using for a while in this screencast series. So we already have events defined and what I'm going to do is just get rid of these and show you how to build them from scratch. So to do that, we'll tap edit to put this into edit mode and then tap on the little minus button next to each event and okay their deletion. And we're ready to add some new ones. Now we'll just tap add to add our first event. Now the type is marker, which is fine for this event. The title we want to change to Roaster Charged. This is going to auto trigger when we reach our charge temp. Now you may notice that the trigger information was never included on the events that we added a few moments ago. That's because Roastmaster knew that those events would never have a chance to fire. Uh, the roast we were using was a completed roast and we were not presented with the trigger information. Here though, we're using a curve template and this curve template will eventually be used in a roast to create new data curves and those will have a chance to fire. So Roastmaster is uh, giving us the option to turn on auto trigger for this particular event. And that is what we want to do here. So we will keep trigger turned on. Let's have a look at the type field. We have three choices, ascending level, descending level, and time. The levels, of course, refer to the temperature of the curve. So with ascending level chosen, this event will only fire when the probe temperature is rising. Descending, of course, would be only when it's falling. And time would be where you would input a specific time that you want this event to fire during the roast. So we want ascending level, so we'll keep that checked. Let's look at evaluation. You can choose to have auto trigger events evaluated either before, during, or after the roast. This one we want to be alerted when our roaster is up to temperature, so we'll choose before. And for level, we want 200 to be the firing temperature, and that is what we consider our charge temp for this particular profile. And finally, let's change the alert here. We want a nice simple alert that's audible but unobtrusive and bell is a good choice for that. Alarm is much more um, garish, it's loud, uh, it will get your attention, but we're, we don't want to go that far for this alert. We want a simple alert, so we'll choose bell and finally tap save. And there's our first event. We'll tap add again to add another event. And let's take a look at the type field here. Up until now, we've simply been using the standard marker type. But Roastmaster offers a few other types here that are heavily integrated into the reporting engine. So for this next event, we want to be alerted when our roast temperature has reached its turnaround point. In other words, the bean temperature has dropped as far as it will go and is starting to rise again. That's characterized as the turnaround point, so we'll choose turnaround. Now with the turnaround type selected, once this roast is complete, that information will be available to the reporting engine so that we could conceivably go run a report of our roasting for a particular time period and analyze the turnaround point on each roast. Roastmaster does not give you dedicated fields for recording this information for a couple of reasons. Number one, it would be a manual process. You would be forced to do it at the end of each roast. Um, number two, iOS has a limited screen real estate, so I try not to clutter up roast detail views with just scads and scads of fields everywhere. Um, sometimes it's best to provide an opt-in scenario where you can choose to have this information recorded in an elegant fashion that doesn't require you to actually enter it and events suit that bill very well. 
Now we don't need to enter a title unless we have a specific title that we want displayed in the analyzer. Uh, for these specialized events, uh, Roastmaster will simply show you the type of event. So turnaround suits our needs just fine here. Um, the same thing applies in certain situations for the type and level fields down here in the trigger information. Turnaround is a very specific type. So Roastmaster is looking for the point at which the temperature stops falling and starts rising again. So we don't actually set a level for this and the type is, is kind of a hybrid between the two, so the type is automatic as well. Um, evaluation, we only have one choice because this is only applicable during the roast. And alert, we don't really need to be alerted of this event. We'll see it happen on the screen, but we don't need any audible alert sounded for us. So this event is done, we can just tap save, and there's our second event. So let's add another event, and this time we want a type of drying end. Now we want to evaluate this of course during the roast, and for the level, I typically use 149 Celsius to signify the end of the drying phase. And again, we don't want an alert, so this event is done. We tap save, and on to the next event. This event is going to be a pyrolysis event. Now, it's beyond the scope of this particular screencast to debate the stage of pyrolysis in a roast. Most people refer to it as the crack stage. I personally feel that it is uh, much more complex than that, that crack is not always a good indicator of the pyrolysis stage. And I also feel that a separate metric for targeting this by specific temperature is a better solution than relying on defining your development as how long you hear cracks coming from the roaster. So suffice it to say, pyrolysis is similar to development, but I believe it's much more accurate if you can target this by temperature. And for that, I typically use 180. Now again, we don't want an alert here, so we'll tap save, and that event's done. Now for our next event, this is going to be a signal to me to open the roast damper. And for that, we just need a general type of marker, and we're going to call it open damper and we want this to fire at an ascending level during the roast at the level of 185. Now this is typically the moment that I start hearing cracks. This is a good way to back off on the heat as the roast starts to generate its own heat. And I do want an alert for this, so I'll change that to be bell and tap save. And finally, for our last event, this is going to be the signal to drop the beans. So we'll call it, ironically, drop beans. And we want this to fire at, let's just say 201. And that will be the point at which we quench this roast. And we definitely want an alert for this, so we'll set this one to be alarm, because that is pretty important. And of course, it's going to fire during the roast at an ascending level, so this one is good. We can tap save. And we now have all of our completed events in place and ready to be used. I'm just going to use the drag handles on the right-hand side to move them into the spots that I expect them to happen in sequential order as we roast, and then we'll be finished. Okay, we'll tap done and navigate back to our profile. So now that we've modified the bean mass curve template here in our profile, 
whenever we tag that profile in a future roast, these curve templates will spawn new data curves that contain this new information we've just added. So let's see this in action. We'll go to the roast list and add a new roast and tap add item and choose an item and we'll pick our trusty pea berry here and enter a weight of two pounds and tap save. Now all we need to do is choose our profile, pyrolysis target three, and save this roast and launch the roast analyzer. So as our temperatures rise, we can look and see all of our auto trigger events down here waiting to fire. And our first one will in just a second when we reach the charge temp that we've defined at 200. At that point, we begin the roast, our temperatures start falling and slowly leveling off until they reach the turnaround point that we've defined. And our event fires there and the temperatures start to slowly rise as the beans take on more heat. We refer to this phase as the drying phase. And once we reach the end of this phase and our event fires, we'll enter into the ramp stage. And in this stage, we're slowly approaching first crack and we also have a pyrolysis event defined. So we'll record the cracks we hear, and when we reach our pyrolysis temperature, that event will fire. And then we've made a note here to open the damper to take some of the heat out of this roast, and our temperatures will start rising more slowly as a result, and this curve will round off somewhat and finally reach the temperature that we've defined as the end of our roast at 201, whereupon we stop the roast in Roastmaster as we quench the roast on the roaster, and this roast is finished. So now you've seen not only how to add manual events to a roast or a curve, but also how to incorporate auto trigger events into the curve templates of your profiles. Hopefully you found this screencast informative and can see ways to apply this knowledge to your own workflow. Now it's worth noting here that we've demonstrated this process of setting up auto trigger events in the curve templates of a profile, but the same logic applies if you don't use profiles in your workflow. You would just need to create your own data curves and events manually whenever you roast. Naturally, I do strongly advise employing profiles in your workflow, not only for accuracy, but also for speed. So thanks for joining me here today. Be sure to join us for our next screencast where we'll cover, uh, well, not quite sure yet, possibly differential temperature projections, but whatever the case, it will definitely be something to help you get the most out of using Roastmaster.